processing in communication systems, encoding and decoding analog and digital signals. So first we need to understand what analog data is. And as humans, we understand data in a variety of variable forms. This form of data is known as analog data, which includes examples such as time, light, and temperature. Okay, so if we do look at them in specifics, if we look and look at time, time can be measured on two scales. Uh, it can be 24 hour time, or it can be 12 hour time. If it's 24, it goes from the hour zero to 23. Okay, if it's 12 hour time, we're looking at one to 12. Okay, and that's the cycles it goes through. So that's its measurement scale. And then obviously it has values within that scale. Temperature can be assessed in two forms. It can be degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. And it has its own scales too that we usually go up to based on how hot things can get. Okay, but obviously there's two different scales there and we can't control the temperature. We can only measure it, okay, based on the environment. So we obviously have tools for us as humans to understand the scales of temperature, but unfortunately at their variable analog level, a computer cannot understand that data. We need to then convert that data and encode it into a digital form if it's going to be understood by an information system and in the context of this unit, a communication system. So here is an analog wave and as you can see, it's varied, okay? It has varying heights and varying widths apart from each wavelength, okay? And this could represent sound, for example, it could re reflect my voice right now, the pitch of my voice, the, uh, the tone, the, the way that I hold on to a certain pitch, okay? That would all be reflected in that sound wave. If I was going to put that into a system, I need to encode it and you'd have to transform it into digital data. But first, let's get an understanding of some forms of analog data. So as said, voice and sound are analog. Okay, the volume that we speak at, the pitch we speak at, the speed we speak at, which I'm criticized about a lot. Okay, temperature, which can change during the day based on the sun and the time of day. Okay, time itself is a variable. It is pretty much set what time will happen throughout the day, but we can change the settings for it. Okay, and light, okay, the light levels within a room or outside, okay, they are all varying uh, variable values, okay. The flip side of this is digital data, and digital data is what computing systems understand. This data only exists in two forms, that of zero and one. Now that doesn't sound like much at first, but it's the way we arrange those zeros and ones and the way we combine them together that allows us to represent a whole variety of different things in a computer and essentially the different media types of text, image, audio, and video. Okay, the way we arrange data and then the software we apply it to those zeros and ones will have different meanings. The thing is with zeros and ones, humans don't understand it. Okay, so these zeros and ones, they need to be decoded back into an analog form if it's gonna be understood by human beings. Okay, so this is a digital signal and as you can see, it's either zero or one. The, gaps between are always exactly the same okay there is no varying here and they're always at the same height it's either a one level or a zero level when it's at a pit or a height okay it's either up or down always at the same level okay much more structured than that of the variable analog wave and as mentioned digital data may represent text and numeric symbols okay that we type on our keyboard pixel data for a bitmapped image okay the colors and the bit depth available for those colors in an image sample rates and sizes for an audio file okay how often a sample is taken reflecting the quality of audio that we get out of it and then the image and frame data of a video file okay the resolution of the screen image how often a frame occurs per second okay the amount of frames per second okay, all that data is accumulated in this digital form okay when we do encode the data all right so now that we understand let's try to put this graphically together so if we're thinking a communication system here we have human number one, okay? And they might be talking. We might be talking about some sort of VoIP system, okay? And they might be talking to this system. So their spoken voice is an analog signal, okay? That sound, which then needs to be encoded by the system into a digital form so that can be understood by a computer, okay? And so it goes into the computer, into the communication system. Then on the under, other end of the communication system is where the computer is, and it's using its digital data, it then needs to decode that data back in to human one's voice so that it can be understood by human two. Okay, so I hope that gives you an understanding of the relationship between encoding and decoding. The transformation from analog data into digital data so that it can be sent through a digitized communication system, but then decoding that data back into analog form so that it can be understood once again by humans, okay? So I hope that it helps you understand encoding and decoding of analog and digital signals.